Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Smita Kulkarni, and we welcome all of you to the webinar, Climate Change and Sustainability. We don't want to protect the environment. We want to create a world where environment does not need protection. We're going to have insightful conversations today with our esteemed guests. Welcome to uh, Honorable uh, Union Minister of State, New and Renewable Energy, Chemical and Fertilizers, Shri Bhagwant Kuba, sir. He will be joining us on his mobile phone. Welcome Shri uh, Upendra Tripathi, retired IS, founding, founding Director General of International Solar Alliance, former Secretary to Minister of New Renewable Energy. Welcome, sir. Good evening. Thank you. Welcome to Shri Ramesh Shivana, who's Chairman, Pride Energy Environment Research Resource Institute, President of Karnataka Renewable Systems Manufacturing Association, and the District Director of Environment for Rotary 3190. Welcome, Ramesh, sir. We welcome all our partners today, uh, the hosts, Pride Energy Environment Research Institute, PEERRI, Karnataka, Karnataka Renewable Energy System Manufacturing Association, also known as CRESMA, Rotary 3190, Rotrack 3190. We also would like to welcome all our supporting clubs tonight, Rotary Club of Bangalore Green Park, Rotary Club of Bangalore Whitefield Central, Rotary Club of Bangalore Abilities, Rotary Club of Bangalore Basveshwar Nagar, Rotary Club of Bangalore Rajaji Nagar, Rotary Club of Bangalore Oasis, Rotary Club of Bangalore Yalahanka, Rotary Club of Bangalore Vidyaranyapura, Rotary Club of Bangalore Jayanagar, Rotary Club of Abhigere, and Rotary Club of Green Park. A warm good evening to all of you. Welcome to all the participants who have joined here. We promise you an engaging conversation on the burning issue today which is climate change and what can we do about it. Let us begin as always by seeking the blessings of Vignaharta Lord Ganesha. We have a well invocation by Sri Akshita. She's a 13 year old environmental activist, student of Freedom International from HSR Layout Bangalore. Hi, Hi Akshita, the stage is all yours. My name is Yakshita. I'll be singing uh, a Ganesha Kriti. Yeah, my 
uh, tends to make uh, mistakes and uh, much harmful than uh, we think the serious uh, concern is to limit the global warming 1.5 degree uh, celsius but the planet is already 1 degree centigrade warmer world meteorological organization predicts based on the uh, present climate actions in the next 5 years it will be uh, 1.5 degree warmer uh, than the pre industrial uh, level the climate change potentially uh, represents a major threat uh, to the well being of the human the economic growth should be uh, led by ecology economy cannot be at the cost of ecosystem the caring for nature is an essential uh, component of human well being the popularity of uh, renewable energy is increasing as millions of people around the world uh, use it to generate electricity and uh, to produce variety of uh, cleaner fuels uh, many countries demonstrate that making the transition uh, to 100% renewable energy is a critical decision it is vital and crucial technical options are existing while being an inspiration the move towards 100% renewable energy is still taking a place in a scattered communities and uh, regions around the uh, globe policy makers have taken up measures uh, but nowhere uh, near proportional to the urgency to act the paradigm shift is required for each one of us to move towards uh, uh, carbon uh, neutrality study reports uh, says 60% of the uh, carbon emission is because of the fossil fuel which we burn for the mobility industry and electricity generation energy has become integral part of our life today we have uh, reached the stage we cannot live without energy every social and economical indicators are connected with the energy our life is driven by uh, energy we have added in the basic elements for human existence as uh, food clothing shelter and electricity has been added in hindi we generally we commonly we say roti kapda makan aur bijli now in 17 sustainable development goals all the goals has connection uh, with the energy in spite all this uh, still we depend on 80% of the energy uh, from the fossil fuel uh, in the in this planet like uh, coal diesel petrol lpg uh, cng and uh, so on when we burn uh, these uh, fossil fuel the by product is carbon dioxide which goes to the atmosphere which is the cause for the global warming and uh, leads to uh, climate change so the solution is either we have to limit the energy consumption or switch over to the sustainable energy the first one is not uh, possible because we need economical de development in fact we need uh, to increase the energy consumption to become a developed country so the other solution is sustainable energy so now it is uh, required to sensitize this planet what needs to be done and what is the present progress on this uh, sustainable energy space today in fact uh, we have uh, it is our honor to have two eminent authorities are here to speak on this uh, subject uh, in fact uh, minister is actually was uh, scheduled to reach office and uh, speak and uh, he is on the way and he is also taken up a charge very recently uh, so he is trying to reach office and uh, speak so hoping actually he may reach uh, uh, office uh, he is uh, from gurgaon is traveling to uh, office he was uh, scheduled plan to reach uh, 6:45 but somehow because of the traffic uh, he was not able to uh, reach a uh, couple of times he is uh, communicated to me saying that somehow i want to do uh, address from the office today but uh, uh, unable to do that but uh, on uh, he is watching on the mobile but uh, he may not be able to speak on the mobile he said so let's uh, hope for the best that may maybe if he reach to office by the time so he is going to speak uh well, the important thing is actually this today i'm more excited and uh, very 
happy about uh, this session is actually he is agree to uh, participate in this uh, uh, event and secondly the most important is he uh, honorable minister and uh, myself uh, studied together in uh, siddhanga institute of uh, technology uh, tumkur i i am extremely proud of uh, uh, his achievements and very happy to share uh, his screen today along with uh, him and for uh, this wonderful cause based uh, webinar uh, i know many uh, students and uh, alumni from sit also watching since many people have messaged me uh, they are also watching in youtube and other things i am sure all of them will be at most uh, proud of him and uh, to say, to say a few words about uh, uh, honorable minister sri bhagwant kuba uh, he has been known for simplicity and humbled people friendly easy to access man of action created revolution in bida uh, by his padayatra to reach out uh, each individuals in his constituency the moment he was elected uh, first time uh, as a member of parliament address the concerns of the district of industry and agricultural development bidar was highly neglected uh, district in uh, development uh, because of uh, poor accessibility industry development and uh, farmers were suffering in the district uh, for so many years uh, the credit goes to him for creating a national highways to get good connectivity and uh, then railway connections uh, to many places like bangalore mumbai machli uh, machli patna uh, tirupati Uh, he also created passport service center in bida which was not there um, for quite some time uh, everybody was uh, looking for that uh, and farmers uh, farmers sustainability was one of the major concern always for him he was instrumental in successful implementing uh, the prime minister scheme fasal bima yojana uh, crop insurance uh, schemes uh, to safeguard the uh, farmers he ensured uh, to reach out every farmer uh, in the district and uh, prime minister personally recognized uh, for his work on uh, uh, implementing this uh, scheme uh, in the in the man ki baat uh, his dedication to the people of india has been uh, recognized by honorable uh, prime minister and hand picked to union minister of state today so i definitely welcome uh, today uh, shri bhagwant kuba and uh, secondly we have with us another an authority personality of, uh, from the renewable energy uh, shri upendra tripathi is retired he is the uh, he is from the karnataka uh, uh, karnataka cadre is cadre a global uh, climate and energy expert uh, founding director general of international solar alliance a man who established the international solar alliance from uh, scratch Uh, to 21st century world class organization with 88 signatory countries and over 40 uh, global partners former secretary to the uh, government of india the ministry of uh, new and renewable energy under the guidance of uh, shri piyush goel and honorable uh, prime minister shri narendra modi he made exceptional contribution towards formulating policies that welcomed unprecedented interest uh, from investors to support the prime minister goal of 175 uh, gigawatt in india as per karnataka is concern the idea of powered up uh, solar park one of the largest park in the world of about 12000 acre was initiated and conceived in this uh, period so i wish to mention uh, shri upendra tripathi was also hand picked immediately after his retirement to head the initiative of uh, uh international solar alliance by honorable uh, prime minister my prime minister sri narendra modi which which, which was his uh, dream project so i welcome you sir so with this I, i would uh, request sri upendra tripathi to take over thank you ramesh uh, it's a pleasure to participate in fact uh, 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 you know uh, before you before honorable minister joined in uh we were taking the reactions from the participants and uh, the amount of uh, love and affection rutarians have showed towards climate change is a great thing and uh, i i uh, i congratulate uh, and welcome uh, sri bhagwant kuwa who recently took charge as minister of state for new and renewable energy 
as well as for chemicals and fertilizers uh, in such a short span. He has impressed the officers as a dynamic and practical administrator. Actually, you know, it's the right combination when you're talking about green hydrogen, the combination of chemicals, fertilizers, and renewable energy is going to give a great platform to the Honorable Minister to make tremendous progress uh, in the uh, future. Uh, Ramesh, could you put those slides uh, you had? Yeah. Uh, the second slide, you can start. Uh, I'll go to the second one. This I have read out already. Well, friends, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is the mirror uh, through which we all uh, look, look at us, you know. And uh, uh, I remember this is a very impressive graph for me. Uh, if you look at from 1000 AD, 1200 AD, 1400, 1600, 1800, and uh, 2000 onwards, you look at that yellow line, you know, the uh, CO2, we call it, uh, you know, uh, around every regime, you know, if you're talking about climate and sustainable uh, sustainability, we build up a narrative, a sort of, you know, uh, storytelling. Now, CO2 is known as the, uh, the, the we call it, uh, uh, call it uh, villain number one. Now, if you look at this uh, villain number one, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you find is, uh, uh, you know, CO2, after the industrial revolution set in 1800, it has gone up. And so there is no doubt about climate, you know, uh, you know global warming uh, coming in. But, you know, this, this is not a complete picture because there are several villains in this uh, game of global warming, you know, and uh, uh, CO2 is only one, and it is responsible for 55% of the global warming. There are 45%, you know, which uh, are not addressed in this, this graph. And uh, so that we will come, that is methane, you know, NOx. Could you go to the second second slide? Uh, yeah, no, Mr. Second slide. In the second slide, you know, if global warming takes place, you know, the amount of methane that will come out of the oceans will be around 50 billion tons. As you know, the entire potential, you know, hardly 440 uh, billion tons are left over. So 50 billion will come out of this. And in the next slide, if you, you know, look at that, how much of other potential, 1500 billion tons of carbon in subsea hydrates, they're in the solid form, they will also come out. Now, if the global warming takes place and the ocean temperature goes up, the polars melt, the Himalayan also melts, the sea level goes up, and there is a methane chain reaction that sets in. All this CO2 and methane and nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide will come up, and there is no way we can actually have any sort of climate uh, policy or a program or project because the earth will be a place on fire. We expect Today we are on fire. In fact, we say that we are in the middle of a fire. In the next slide, I'm going to show you how the, the concentration of ice in the Arctic or the, the sea ice extent, if you look continuously, it is going down, which means the area of ice is becoming less and less. And the, the, the density is becoming, uh, uh, in the sense, the thickness is becoming uh, less and less. This is only indicative that uh, there is no doubt about that the, the, the greenhouse gases uh, in the atmosphere are going up. There are solid proof that the ice coverage is uh, coming down. In the next slide, you know, I was talking about so, several villains. In the next slide, it will give you, the next slide you can put them. So, yeah, so I told villain number one is of course CO2. You know, 64% of the global warming comes out of this. Now, the second villain is methane. But we don't, you know, in the narrative, we don't talk much about methane, although it is much worse than carbon dioxide. So the point is, you know, a sustainable climate policy to talk about all villains, not only one, the carbon dioxide. It's the important one, the most important villain. But methane is equally bad, much, much worse than CO2. Similarly, you know, we have nitrous oxide, we have chlorofluorocarbons, we have sulfur uh, oxides. Now, in our present climate policy, only we are too much focused on CO2, which is only responsible for 64%, but the rest of the villains are not there. So 
we have to talk in policy regime about all the villains so that we can address the problems that we have to address. The next slide uh, will come in. And uh, in the next slide, I'm only talking about you know, the human sources of fluorinated gas, the air conditioners. You know, we had the first generation of chlorofluorocarbons, then we got hydrofluorocarbons and all fluid. And these are much more harmful than CO2. And the number of ACs that we are going to use in coming generation are going to be billions and billions uh, more globally. That is why recently there is an amendment, uh, uh, 2003, uh, uh, four years back, called Kigali Amendment. And uh, Kigali Amendment brought in that we should make the freeance of the refrigerants that we use more climate friendly. And uh, I'm happy to say that many companies are trying in that uh, direction. And individually, all of us can also make sure that we use highly energy efficient air conditioners. And, uh, and then, of course, there is demand for cooling from agriculture sector. In India, the farmers, the farming sector, in terms of storage of food grains or a storage of you know, products, agricultural products, as well as saving food waste or agricultural waste, we need a whole cold chain across the country. And this gives employment opportunities to millions of people. And uh, this also gives opportunity for investments. And uh, when you talk about climate policy, we are also talking about environment. We are talking about employment. We are talking about investment and economy. Because in the sustainable part, it is not this or that. Both have to go together. Economic progress as well as sustainable sustainability and solar energy is a brilliant example where you not only help the environment you create employment and you also save uh, uh, money the next slide the in the, this slide you know this only this thing actually i referred currently if you look across the world you know how many percentage of households equipped with air conditioners in selected countries you find japan the highest United States, second highest, Korea, third highest, Saudi Arabia, fourth, China, fifth. India is way behind. But then the middle class in India is going and growing. And uh, we are expected to add a few billion ACs in the next you know, uh, 10 years. And uh, that is true of China. That is true of all you know, uh, growing countries. And this is one sector that climate policy must take into account in order to be sustainable. So the, this, the next slide gives a graphic presentation. Actually, this is the mirror. This is the mirror of the narrative that I was talking. Now, the first point I made is that we are talking mostly of CO2, but that is responsible for around 64% of the problem. And the other 35% we are not talking about, and we should be talking about. And those villains were methane, nitrous oxide, sulfur oxide, sulfur dioxide, uh, you know, SOx, as well as uh, chlorofluorocarbons and uh, you know and uh, uh, other other gases. Now this picture tells us how do we orient today? Today, in fact, you know, I was the secretary in the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, and it is a very powerful ministry because you know in '83 when it was created. It was one of the oldest ministries in the world to be created for renewable energy. And uh, it not only helps the environment, you know, billions of dollars of investment have come in. Billions of employment have been created. It has become a hub of activity of uh, 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 the uh, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. It has given rise to powerful ideas. Reinvest is a big idea. Uh, International Solar Alliance is a big idea. Association of State Road, uh, State uh, uh, renewable energy agencies areas is another powerful organization. So, in this sector, if you look at this energy, energy, and we are talking about the various villains in sector wise, energy is, of course, uh, one. We are all focusing on that uh, now. But the point I'm trying to make is that we have to a sustainable climate policy, either in India or globally, has to address not only energy generation, it has to address the energy used in industry. It has to address uh, 
uh, you know, uh, it has to address the transport sector. You know, the electric vehicles that we are talking about. It has to address energy use in commercial and residential buildings. It has to address energy in agriculture use because only purely putting up solar farms or solar parks, uh, you know, unless we take it to transport, to building sector, to address cooling, is not going to be a very sustainable climate policy. It has to address the so-called, you know, uh, so-called metaphorically, what I said, villains. But here I'm going to tell the sector wise, you know, I call it villain number one is of course energy sector. World over, you know, we have either coal or natural gas that comes in. They have helped a lot, you know, the world has progressed a lot, but during industrial revolution, you know, it has been a phase, we have created an energy sector, which today we call it villain number one. But there is a villain number two also, if you look at the way, you know, the climate, uh, you know, uh, global warming is unfolding, endangering the entire mankind, you know, agriculture, forestry, and land use. If these are improper, then we are adding a lot more global warming issues. For example, we have to manage livestock and manure, which is responsible for 6% of the problem. Agricultural soils, you know, management of soil is critical, 4.1%. Rice cultivation, a lot of methane comes in. Deforestation, 2.2% is responsible. Crop plant, so the point is, you know, along with energy generation, whether we solarize or we go to wind or we go to green hydrogen, which I'll be touching, we have to focus on agricultural, forestry and land use sector. Otherwise, the problem we are not addressing totally. And, uh, you know, our policy is not going to be sustainable. And today's important thing is how we make the global climate policy sustainable. And there is a villain number three, which in fact, mostly we ignore, we don't talk about. And that is called waste sector. You know, we have landfills all over the globe and we get 1.9% of global warming gases from landfills. We get 1.3% from wastewater. And we never talk about these things. No policies are addressing that. So a climate, a sustainable climate policy, global policy has to address uh, waste issue also. And of course, you know, villain number four, we call the industry, you know, the cement, the chemicals. Now, when I say villain, I'm telling a very metaphorical sense. It's not villain, they're heroes because they have been responsible for progress, for creating employment, for seeing that we remove, you know, we move to from different states to another stage where people you now living our standards went up. But so far as global warming is considered, you know, we have to put in money to make the technology environment, uh, you know, uh, friendly. And that way, this particular slide is called the Bible of the climate experts. And to make a sustainable energy uh, policy, sustainable climate policy, we have to address all the factors mentioned in this, you know, in this uh, uh, slide. Could you go to the next slide, Amish? This, of course, I have summarized, you know, the climate change and sustainability, how, you know, the face of the crisis, you know, how the global mean temperature is going up, triggering chain reactions. And uh, it's important to note that, you know, when you talk about hydrogen, nature actually fires the stars with hydrogen, the sun, the hydrogen fusion that uh, empowers the sun, the powers the sun. So hydrogen is very critical and green hydrogen will give a new dimension to solar because that will be the midwife to bring in more and more and cheaper solar energy to the world. Having said this, yeah, next slide, please. I'm, the other point I'm trying to make is a very interesting table. You all can have a look at this. We are comparing the solar capacity installed in 2020 with 2019. Now, you, in some countries you see in red, some countries you see, you know, normal black one. China, it went up by 66% because of course, you know, uh, USA it went up by 99 percent. Japan it came down slightly 9 percent between 20 and 19. Germany it went up 22 percent. India we lost 47 percent down. Italy 4 percent. Australia 5 percent. Vietnam 142 percent up. Korea 21 percent. Spain 33 percent minus. Now total capacity globally went up. Now the question is why in some countries it went up. And in some countries, it went down. That, of course, you know, in the morning, I had a webinar where I suggested CEW could do some study on this. You know, uh, maybe, you know, uh, it has nothing to do with the, you know, much of the 
indirect effect of uh, COVID. But the point is that when global tragedies take place because of global warming, the impact is not going to be uniform. The impact is going to vary from country to country. And each country has to look into that. A sustainable climate policy has to admit and recognize that uh, the climate impact is not going to be uniform. The next slide, please. Ravish, the next slide. Yeah. And uh, this is a new way of the Prime Minister Modi telling about climate justice. In fact, India is talking about climate justice. You know, essentially it says, look, we had a, you know, uh, 11 uh, billion tons of uh, CO2 budget, carbon uh, uh, dioxide of equivalent budget. And the developed countries have put in more carbon earlier. So no space is much, uh, you know, right now only 4. 440 billion tons are left. Now, if you go by the absolute polluting ability today, USA, China, India, India comes third. So you will say India is the third biggest polluter in the world. But if you go to per capita, you see the India's position is coming down from third to 10, which means the per capita, uh, you know, global warming emission by an Indian is uh, less than that of Indonesia, less than that of Brazil, less than that of China, Japan, Germany, Iran, Russia, USA, Canada. So this is a new point that India, in fact, in the last G7, India made a statement saying that, you know, let all countries come down to the global average and global average is around 6.5 uh, metric tons per person. So which means USA has to come down from 18 tons uh, uh, per capita to 6.5, which means the task before 2030, as India is pointing out, will be much bigger for these countries who in terms of per capita pollution or you know, emissions are much higher than uh, India. So essentially, I made three points. A, uh, a sustainable climate policy has to talk about not only carbon dioxide, it has to talk about other villains. And B, a sustainable climate policy has to address not only energy sector, but it has to address residential sector, it has to address agricultural sector, it has to address uh, uh, the green cement, green steel sector. Uh, and without this, actually, no, you know, 10 years down the line, we may not be able to export cement and steel unless we change our technology into areas where the emissions level comes down. And uh, I remember Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi, telling in the beginning of uh, International Solar Alliance that, you know, India should be prepared for a regime you know, what you call the net zero emissions. Those days, he was visionary enough to think that one day the world will go for net zero emission. And uh, who is, of course, going to build a car? Who is going to put less and less? Those are all ethical uh, issues which India uh, would like to be addressed through per capita uh, totals. But, uh, uh, but climate justice, in terms of getting more money to address the problems, in order to get more technology, which are more green, and more climate friendly. These are the issues which are going to actually help implement global policies. And uh, I'm sure that uh, these points uh, uh, about addressing the picture as a whole, addressing and involving and making inclusive the other sectors, looking at climate justice also as to who is going to finance the transition is uh, critically uh, important. And uh, 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 let me see, there is a slide left. Any slides left, Ramesh? Ramesh, can you hear? Well, yeah. So, essentially, these are the three points I made. Once again, I'm very thankful to the Honorable Minister for having agreed to participate, but uh, because of some uh, transition issues. Uh, I know I was in Gurgaon before I came to Bangalore, and uh, Gurgaon traffic is uh, actually extremely unpredictable. And sometimes you make a provision for 45 minutes, it may take much longer than that. Uh, and I'm also uh, thankful to uh, Mr. Ramesh, uh, who is a uh, you know, friend of mine. I know him from Aisha days um, and even before. And, uh, and thankful to the Rotarians, uh, you know, who uh, put this uh, time together. And for the large scale attendance that people have joined, this shows how much dedicated we are towards the climate cause. Thank you, once again. Sir, can you also share something about AISA, what he's doing? 
and uh, how uh, really india is trying to address uh, uh, this uh, this uh, climate uh, and uh, the, the present goals are we able to achieve or uh, uh, how what is the plans of uh, india to reach the goal it's a good uh, thing actually i didn't uh, touch that thing because i have become you know outside isa now but uh, international solar alliance was uh, prime minister modi is one of the prime ideas of uh, protect you know projecting india's leadership in the field of climate now when you say india's leadership you know with uh, getting a headquarters of a, an international organization is a very tough thing and uh, india could manage to have the headquarters you know we tried we had earlier tried for uh, the uh, irena headquarters it went to united arab emirates because there was an international bidding process and uh, uh, india must have put a million dollar or so uh, germany had put in 5 million euros uh, sorry 9 million euros australia austria had put in 5 million euros but uae gave a blank check so it went to uae and so it was a good success of india to have got the headquarters and currently around 100 countries have uh, you know signed the uh, treaty it's a very complicated process and isa has come up well i mean come up uh, largely you know now it is a global brand uh, and i'm so happy that isa is doing tremendously well, you know good work in terms of launching programs creating a network coming up with new and innovative uh, ideas uh, uh, in fact they came up with a isa care program to address to electrify all hospitals which don't have electricity across the world now you know when you talk of you know doing work in a particular province is difficult more difficult when you work in a country and isa is working across countries and uh, you know networking with uh, partners and uh, due to covid of course last two assemblies were virtual but when the first assembly was there we had you know some 40 uh, ministers here and once in a year all of them come they interact with india they come to know about india and uh, india's uh, and uh, france uh, of course is a partner because we launched it in france during you know november 30th 2015 cop 21 and france is the co president but isa has a very inclusive governance structure we have two vice presidents from africa two from europe two from asia pacific and two from latin america so if you find uh, you know it has been the only global body in india and i proudly say that you know it is a it is the only office uh, in india which can fly the flags of 194 countries one day and the foundation stone is and when uh, you know was laid by honorable prime minister but when real construction starts they will be getting soil from all the countries all the un member countries and this is the only building in india which uh, will have the soil from other countries thank you thank you thank you sir for the presentation it was deeply insightful knowing about all the villains the climate justice and for once happy to not top the charts so most of the places in even in greenhouse emissions india is way behind and we are happy to be way behind so uh, i'm going to take a few questions that have come up in the chat box as well as our youtube live this session is being streamed live on youtube and uh, there are a few questions on that there as well so the uh, first question is from uh, vivek uh, my name is vivek and my question is how can the solar plants contribute to the electric mobility so that the stress on the grid is reduced uh, or has no impact is there any work being done in this space to address both the emission as well as to reduce the grid issues so you sir can you can you sir can you address this question sir uh to go ahead ramesh you, you uh, could you could you repeat it i just had some issue here yeah, yeah. so the the uh, how can solar plants contribute to the electric mobility so that the stress on the grid is reduced or has very little impact well uh, you know this uh, this is something like this you know if anyone is uh, you know lives uh, in any place beside the national highways you have seen petrol bunks where you know petrol and diesel are uh, being uh, given imagine petrol and diesel are not there so that particular petrol bunk has become a bank of batteries you know batteries and the different vehicles come to that battery bank and uh, uh, already charged batteries are in stored there in thousands in within minutes the old batteries exhausted batteries are taken out of the vehicle and new batteries are put in and uh, we call it the battery economy 
Now, these batteries will be charged from solar. So the nearest villages, you know, they can take, they can charge, they can like, you know, like uh, LPG cylinders, it can be, you know, uh, uh, distributed. So they, they come, they collect, they uh, store. So every diesel, you know, petrol bank becomes a battery bank. And you have millions of EVs, electric vehicles, those who will run in those charged batteries. So, I mean, until and unless you get hydrogen or fusion, uh, you know, energy temperature, EV is going to dominate. EV is going to dominate uh, not only Indian industry, but the global industry, because not because it is going to be, you know, of course, it's going to be environment friendly, because, uh, but it is going to, it is going to be cheaper with scale, with volume going up, it's going to, the prices are going to come down like that of, you know, storage, uh, you know, from $250 uh, an hour, kilowatt hour, it has come down to almost 100 and odd. And, uh, and uh, talk about the solar panels, the solar, you know, megawatt cost. So with volume increasing EVs, you know, the battery cost, the storage cost will come down. And the storage cost is very critical to make actually solar energy universal. So, so, so uh, the linkage between the, you know, green hydrogen, if you call that also, and the solar and the battery and the EVs will be based across the highways, across all the petrol banks being transferred to battery banks. So is there any work being done on that effect in any place in India? Well, you, you see, you have many charging points are coming up. In fact, uh, you know, many startups are in Bangalore and uh, even government-wise, uh, Bangalore, you know, they have started uh, EV charging machines for two wheelers and uh, cars, uh, uh, and it's picking up. The number of, if you look at in Google also, the graph of how many EVs are coming up, is going up. I mean, Ola has uh, introduced some 200,000 electric, uh, uh, you know, two wheelers. So now so much of, uh, you know, uh, arrive about that. So globally, we're moving towards EVs, you know, uh, whether it will be uh, hydrogen based, uh, you know, electricity, or it will be, battery-based electricity, but we are moving towards EVs. It's very encouraging to see. You know, I like the vision of having petrol pumps full of recharging batteries instead. Um, the next question is uh, basically on uh, a very generic question on global warming. Uh, the awareness creation at base level is very inadequate to enable avoidance of global warming. Well, uh, I think that is very critical and uh, Mr. Ramesh mentioned in his, uh, uh, you know, address uh, how critical is awareness generation. And I think in this, the young generation, the schools, the colleges, the youth, the Rotarians, for example, can really become a vehicle for, you know, creation of awareness. And uh, 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 equally important is not only awareness, you know, it is equally important the implementation of ideas that we have. Uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, Mr. Ramesh talked about consumption. Yes, the India's per capita consumption is low and we cannot keep our emissions low because there is no consumption. The global average is three times that of average Indian electricity consumption. So the consumption has to go up, industries have to consume more, more industries have to come up, but they have to come up in a sustainable way. And awareness, of course, the education system, the, you know, the, the civil society, the government machineries have to, uh, uh, you know, create more awareness. But I'm sure, you know, even talking about plastics, you know, you, the awareness is coming up. Uh, if you look at the way pollution control board function, the way newspaper coverage, the way that we're having webinars, that this itself is a proof that more and more awareness are coming in. Yes, absolutely. So the next question is on uh, policies, which is uh, the best way of energy sustainability is for the government to encourage and make it compulsory to have solar panels for residential and commercial buildings uh, by providing subsidy. Any thoughts on this, sir? Well, government of India had a target of uh, 40 gigawatt of uh, you know uh, residential uh, solar, but uh, we haven't got that much. I think we've got four or five gigawatt. But yes, if the costs are coming down, uh, you know, and the way new models are coming in, for example, uh, the model Tesla is coming up with that. Do it on your own. You don't have to call an electrician. You bring a packet, you know, a package. You open it and fit it. Uh, it is like a, you know, an almira you make. So gradually, efficiency is going up, and uh, we are getting things cheaper. We are getting, you know, more independent way of uh, putting solar. So I'm sure 
things are going to go in countries like Australia and Germany and uh, USA, where rooftop, you know, is uh, more doable. Uh, we have to, uh, in India, it has been rather uh, little difficult, but then we have tremendous potential. You know, we're talking about thousands and thousands of schools, thousands and thousands of hospitals. The other day in Madhya Pradesh, uh, near Indore, a Singapore plant put rooftop for a central police academy. And the cost was, after subsidy, one rupee 38 paisa per kilowatt hour. And this one rupee 38 paisa was constant for next 30 years. Now, can anybody anywhere get energy for one rupee per kilowatt hour per unit for one rupee 38 paisa, not only this year, but next 29 years? And if this is the price, I think nobody can stop solar. It has to grow, it will grow. Economies of scale. So there's one more question on YouTube uh, by Mr. Kumar Swami. says that uh, something similar. Compared to other countries, why government of India is not uh, serious in extracting maximum quantity of solar, wind, geothermal, and ocean energy? Well, I mean, if you look at India, they have done a wonderful uh, job. Uh, solar from 4 gigawatt in 2014 have become 40 gigawatt now. And by 2022, they're adding up to 175 uh, gigawatt of uh, wind and everything put together. They've got a target of 150 gigawatt, uh, you know, by 2030. And uh, they have, they're meeting all their commitments, whatever they've given in the, you know, to the global uh, body, the UNFCC. So uh, we can do a lot more. I mean, we meaning you and me all put together, but we haven't done badly. We have done quite well. And uh, the entire global, at you know, uh, attention is on India not only for its uh, whole declaration of 175 uh, gigawatt, but the provinces to work, Rajasthan, Karnataka, uh, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, you know, there are many leading states. They have done wonderful work in renewable energy and they're you know, still going on. That's, that's very encouraging. So um, there are a lot of thoughts on, you know, uh, about creating awareness and how, you know, like you said, we should all do our bit and many of us are not even aware of how we can contribute. Um, so is there, are there any top two, three areas which need to be addressed by sustainable economic policy that could make the biggest impact? You know, there are several things you spoke about. Are there any two, three that you would like to pick? Well, as I, as I told you, policy, three things. I a, it, uh, CO2 is fine, but we have to talk about other villains, the methane. In fact, at the time we have a methane uh, mission, you know, to reduce methane, uh, we have to think of uh, cooling, you know, how to make refrigerants uh, global warming friendly. We have to look at the Arctic and the Himalayas, what is the interconnection. We have to do a cost-benefit analysis. What are the you know, disasters that will come and how we meet, what is the cost of those disasters. So uh, more and more, we have to keep three things in view, employment, environment, and our economic uh, interest. Uh, you know, so these things have to be fused together in, a, in, a, in the future uh, policies. And that's being done though. Okay. Thank you, sir. There's one more from uh, Mr. Raja Ram. Uh, We've heard about so many nice things about solar energy, uh, but he's talking about the other side. When, uh, are there any side effects of having solar power plants? Uh, is there a way to recycle the solar modules safely in their uh, end of life? Because uh, there is uh, you know, a lot of talk on uh, reflection of the solar panels, which are blinding the birds and themselves creating harm to the atmosphere. Uh, well, I happen to go to, you know, uh, Pavagada, uh, because I from the Karnataka cadre, uh, from Bangalore, three and a half hours. Uh, if you go to Pavagada, you will find out the transition. You know, what type of transition is brought in the place? Uh, earlier, there are no rains, there are no agriculture. Now it is a hub. And the type of humanitarian measures they have taken to address the issues of farmers who actually were there earlier. Uh, you know, they not only uh, they will get back their land after 25 years. Uh, they get a lease rental of more than 21,000 rupees per year, per acre. And the, the energy that is coming is, in, uh, you know, it comes in the daytime. Earlier, the farmers used to get energy at nighttime when, you know, industry owned use. And today, farmers get it daytime because the solar energy is coming a lot in power grid during daytime. So, uh, reflections, blinding the parts may be true, but... Uh, I haven't uh, read any scientific articles. I would love him if you can send it to my email ID, youtripartyatgmail.com. 
and uh, uh, and if there are any other side effects, we should uh, discuss to modify the technologies because whatever technology we adopt, whether of solar panels, uh, uh, we should be careful that we address environmental issues. Now, number two, about the disposal of solar waste. Yes, by 2030, we will have 60 million tons of solar panels uh, globally. Now, how do you dispose this? But, uh, you know, uh, technologies are coming in because there is a huge amount of hidden wealth inside these panels, starting from steel to silver to aluminium to, you know, a number of heavy metals uh, are there. And they're very costly. And after 30 years, I'm sure the amount of heavy metal hidden in the 60 million tons of solar waste is going to be a gigantic figure. And uh, uh, so it is a profitable thing to deal with uh, the solar waste that we're talking about uh, as and when the life cycle ends. Thank you, sir. There's one more question um, saying, what DC appliances be the future if it can be connected with energy produced from biogas and solar with modern technology? Well, if you are referring to solar cookers, I remember in 2014, we had solar cookers standalone. But today you have solar cookers, they are hybrid, you know. When there is no sun, you can connect to the electric pole and you can, you know, electric socket and work on that. So uh, that type of hybridization can is possible and can be done. But it depends what type of uh, appliances that we're talking about. And uh, uh, we must address uh, uh, that way based, uh, because in, in Madhya Pradesh, we have uh, Sister Janak who has 60 types of solar cookers and 24 by seven, you know, she's able to store and cook and all that. So uh, globally, you know, yes, solar cookers haven't been that popular here, but there are many countries that is mass manufacturing, but you know, you can have today everything, you know, you can have uh, solar batteries, solar torches, you can have, uh, and we had a solar aeroplane went around the world. Uh, so, and uh, uh, I can show you my solar watch, wristwatch. Everybody, you know, everything that you want in solar is available today. And uh, the idea is how to use it, how to take it further and reduce uh, prices further. Uh, so, any breakthrough achieved in transporting solar power through global grids? Well, uh, that is called grid integration. You know, the only way you carry solar power, you know, you because solar is uh, DC, you convert to AC and put it to the grid and then you you, you take it. But uh, off late, you know, if you talk about the green energy corridor of India, it has become a global innovation. You know, they built a corridor across seven states with a 1 billion euros money from, uh, you know, K, you know uh, KFW, the German agency. And, uh, oh, uh, and, and if you look at the integration issues, the software is better, the, the scheduling is better now, the predictions are better, how much sun you are going to get tomorrow, because there is so much of database on the sun. So software, knowledge, smart technology, smart meeting, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, new uh, integrations are making things easier, much easier than now, than it was earlier. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are no more questions on the chat box, but there's a lot of I know, uh, admiration and kind words for you for uh, having clarified a lot of things, having told a lot of things that the government is already doing. I think uh, many of us were not even aware about some of the things and where we stand globally. So thank you so much. And there are a lot of you know, uh, nice words for you in the chat box. Please you know, uh, go through that. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. Uh, we come to a close uh, to our session. Uh, like Sir said, we cannot talk about climate change sitting in AC rooms. We cannot cut trees, make paper, and make a poster saying save trees. So uh, that was a very interactive Q&A session. We move on to the next thing, which is the vote of thanks uh, by Rotarian Rajaram Ramurthy. Thank you, Smita. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, today. I sincerely thank Sri Bhagwant Kuba, Minister of State for New and Renewable Energy, Chemicals and Fertilizers, Government of India. Thanks, sir, for agreeing to participate in the webinar amidst your busy schedule. We understand your preoccupations and the difficulties to speak to us today. 
we look forward to hearing your thoughts and plans from the government of india in the next available opportunity thank you sir our deep gratitude to shri upendra tripathi retired ias officer ex secretary ministry of new and uh, renewable energy ex director general international solar alliance sir thanks for the deep insight into global warming and what can happen to our planet if there is no recognition of what needs to be done right now i am sure given more time we will be able to address more issues and methods adopted to mitigate this climate change there is no doubt there is a big challenge in front of us it was a very gripping session and i am sure that you know you will be able to speak to us in the future thanks to shri ramesh shivana district director environment of uh, this rotary district 3190 president karnataka renewable energy systems manufacturer association and chairman pride energy environment resources research institute sir thanks for your wonderful opening remarks and observations and setting the tone for the evening your involvement at the district level of rotary 3190 will have a great impact on how rotarians across the globe take note of their contributions towards the global warming and steps to be taken to reduce the warming i thank all the participants who logged on to the zoom platform and youtube we thank the organizers chronic foundation cresma rotary district 3190 rotrac 3190 pride energy environment resources research institute and the following participating clubs rotary bangalore green park rotary bangalore whitefield central rotary bangalore abilities rotary bangalore rajaji nagar rotary bangalore oasis rotary bangalore elahanka rotary bangalore vidyaranyapura rotary bangalore abigere and rotary bank basveshwar nagar and rotary bangalore jayanagar i thank ms akshata for rendering a wonderful invocation for today's event our appreciations to ms smita kulkarni chairperson for solid waste management program rotary district 93190 for being today's mc thank you ma'am i am confident that this event has been of interest to all the participants today and has sensitized each one of us towards global warming thank you and have a great evening thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much for participating sir upendra sir thank you thank you everyone for joining us uh, this event is being streamed live on youtube you can uh, find the link in the chat box do share widely thank you so much for joining and have a good night